Assistant General Manager, Centre for Extension Education, our Honourable Speaker, Mr. Gary Chow, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the organising committee, I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honoured to have with us today, Mr. Gary Chow. Mr. Gary Chow is a lawyer who shifted gears from a motoring journalist and a company creative director to, to a certified trainer and coach. Mr. Gary Chow will be sharing his knowledge and skills on how to manage conflict. It will be conducted in a dynamic and highly creative way. Foremost, you will get into the insights of why most people tend to ignore conflicts. You will also discover various types of conflicts and how they arise. In this talk, you will learn about the perception of conflicts, conflict management essentials, category of conflicts in the workplace, and difficult behaviors in conflicts. Without further delay, ladies and gentlemen, let us extend our warmest welcome to Mr. Gary Chow with his talk, Why Star Fund Customers. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I always like to uh, greet the participants in the foreign language and to see what is the response. So some of you uh, would greet back in uh, some says it's konbangwa. Right. So if you are uh, well versed with the Japanese culture, right, if I'm meeting you for the first time, usually it's ohayo. Okay, uh, thank you so much uh, for being here and thank you, Yuta, for organizing this talk uh, for me to share with you right, something um, very interesting and very useful for managers and also for any uh, persons who are uh, going into the workforce right? because this is an area where you, if you can manage conflict in the workplace right? it will be an excellent uh, management skills that uh, you can have for you to go far uh, in the corporate uh, ladder Alright, so uh, they, although the title is very interesting, right, it says uh, why staff punch customers, right? So this got nothing to do with KFC, but if you want to ask about KFC incidents, right, you know, feel free to ask, okay? Alright, uh, uh, this day uh, I'm going to share with you on a few things, right, uh, as I indicated earlier, right? So my uh, training is part of a uh, learning and development for most uh, HR uh, companies. Or, or rather, most companies HR department, right, where they uh, have this uh, uh, program for talent management, right. Anybody work in an organization, right, the um, objective of the HR will be uh, one of it is to look into the learning and development of uh, every talent in the organizations. So I have uh, conducted training for uh, public listed, multinationals, GLCs, and including uh, Bank Nagara, right. So uh, I'm here to share with you, right. Uh, as to some of the aspect of uh, these uh, management skills. Right, before that, uh, I want to ask how many of you are students of uh, Utah? Okay, how many is not? Okay, so we got the half half uh, balance. Alright, so, so the, the questions to students will be uh, why are you here? Is it because you want to learn about the skills or is it because uh, you want to get some points? <laughs> For uh, this workshop, yeah, because I believe that for students you can get some points uh, uh, for this uh, workshop, right? Because I saw the notice it says oh, students can get certain points. Yeah. So anyway, it doesn't matter whatever reason or some of you are interested, right? You know about the topic, right? Which is why uh, a staff uh, punch customers. Uh, that's why you want to be here and uh, find out you know, for yourself, right? And for the rest of you, uh, why are you here? Okay. So now, since you're here, we're here. Yeah, might as well right? come in and, and uh, listen to this. 
All right, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, so this is a uh, because the group is not too big, right? So let's make it informal and interactive, right? For fun, right? Because we learn more from uh, having fun. Yeah, the small kids, right? They learn a lot uh, while they're having fun. So my trainings, I believe in having fun too, and and yet to be effective. All right, so I'm going to share with you why am I doing this, right? Because I never uh, wanted to be a trainer in the first place, right? So I happened to be one by accident. So and because now I'm sharing this, so uh, um, this has come from uh, my passion, right? A lot of the, the participants, right? The feedback given by them is like they find it really useful because this is a real life experience that I have gone through in life, right? So I'm going to share and, and then impart that with the participants, right? And then what is it all about and how to go about it? So this is uh, because it's just a two hours uh, talk, right? It won't be a very in depth uh, session, right? In the in depth sessions, the uh, participants get a lot more. Right, in the uh, specific tools and specific situations. So here, I'm trying to give you as much as I can within these two hours so that you can have a fair, uh, good understanding of uh, this topic. Alright, so let's move on. Okay, so why am I doing this? Right? So I started off as a, a, a lawyer by studies. Right? So since I came back from UK, right, uh, I became instead of practice law because of uh, very interesting uh, so-called horror stories about uh, the legal practices at that time. So I uh, choose to go for uh, something uh, very uh, more interesting. So I uh, actually uh, joined the staff right, as a journalist. So uh, at that time, I was uh, put uh, in position into uh, what we call Metro Desk. Right, Metro Desk is the uh, journalist who, who is writing for the Metro section or the Metro Pula of the Star newspaper. Right, so at that time, not many of us in that desk because uh, it's pretty new at that time. Right, so uh, I get to cover uh, all kinds of uh, news right, for Clang Valley. So it's really exposed me to uh, very interesting people, personalities, and um, also uh, uh, Understanding, you know, when you interview someone, there are people who are love to give you uh, points or details about uh, what's happening because they also say, please don't uh, quote my name, but please don't take photograph of me because they like publicity. But there are also others, right, who will say, don't quote me, eh? I tell you this, but don't quote me. Right? So there are all kinds of personalities, right, which uh, I'm exposed to. I find it really interesting. So I learn a lot about people in general. So they expose. Uh, my understanding of uh, interpersonal skills. Right? So for that, I find that it's really useful uh, to share uh, with the participants in my training. Right? So uh, later, I got an invitation to be a uh, motoring journalist by the car magazine called Asian Auto. How many of you heard of Asian Auto? Nothing. <laughs> so no car enthusiasts <laughs> in the room. Okay, so uh, very interesting offer because right, you know, I get to test drive new car, modified cars, and super bikes, right? You know, guys, you know what I mean, right? If you like to ride super bikes, yeah. So there was a, a interesting job. So I was invited and uh, became a, a motoring journalist. Then later, uh, I took on uh, being a creative director for uh, an invitation for a few friends to be a business partnership, right? As a uh, uh, advertising advertising company uh, creative director. So later. Um, after the, uh, a while, I started to attend seminars and workshops, something like this, uh, so in uh, different uh, durations. And I found out there's a lot of uh, interesting uh, things that I did not know. Right? So when I got to know about it, I got this aha moment. How many of you can relate to that? When you discover new things, it's like aha. Yeah? Yeah. So I got a lot of aha moment, and then uh, from that, when uh, some of my friends who had uh, uh, issues or, or, or miscommunications at workplace, right, I share with them how they can actually resolve it. So one thing leads to another, so I, I became uh, a trainer right, after that. So apart from uh, conducting training full time, for the past uh, now nine years I am in training, or oh, ten years already. So in between training, I uh, also appointed uh, as a uh, ambassador for my university's alumni. That's a Wuhan University alumni, right? And then, uh, okay, yeah. So uh, I'm also uh, appointed as a brand ambassador for Honda cars. How many of you drive Honda here? Or oh, like to have a Honda? Oh, nobody likes Honda. So what do you like? Ferrari, no BMW, or oh, Mercedes-Benz. 
Okay, so yeah, and uh, uh, Frank's uh, across a few doors away, uh, where MPH office is, right, uh, he's the GM, so he knew that uh, I used to write for uh, newspaper and uh, a magazine as well, so he invited me to write for their magazines um, for some of the publications by MPH. So one of the recent uh, publications that they had is uh, called People's Age. It's a human capital trends uh, magazine, so it's right about I write about uh, what's happening in the uh, human resources uh, uh, environment, right? So that's what I'm doing, and also uh, a bit on the uh, car magazine, right? And uh, I have also friends uh, from the advertising days, right? So they also invited me um, to do a bit of. Okay, right, yes, yeah, so a bit of TV commercial, so I, I acted in some of uh, TV commercial, yeah, so that's what I do in the free time, okay, so let's move on, right, so here is a uh, question just to share with you some of the features of the different organizations that I've conducted training for, from uh, multinational like Pfizer, uh, Telecom, Bank Nagara, Mara, uh, Center of uh, United Nations Project, uh, with the Burmese strategies, right, so good that, you know, now the the company, I mean, the, the country is changing. They are formerly known, known as uh, Burma, now it's Myanmar. Yeah. So uh, these are some of the organizations that I've conducted training for. All right. So here's a, a quick one listing of uh, the multinationals uh, public listers by category, right? Uh, from uh, Ericsson, Standard Chartered, uh, Tanjong, Bank of Manguna, Sai Dabi Group, uh, private corporations like. Uh, a car company like Kia, NASA, government departments, uh, to uh, professional bodies. Right? So these are some of the organizations I have done in-house. Right? So for public, in-house is where I go to a company or organization to do the training there. For a public uh, training is just like this. Right? People come from different organizations and then the uh, training. Okay. So uh, what inspires me, right? You know, I like to uh, learn a lot of things. Right? I, I like knowledge. So from the knowledge, right, I, um, I'm also adventurous. So I like to travel, I like to meet different people. So sometimes, right, when you meet different people, they can share with you something which is very valuable, right? Which is uh, something that you find it, uh, it's like a life uh, lesson, yeah? So people like, uh, uh, of course, uh, everybody knows that you know, the person who makes everybody can fly, right? Uh, uh, at that time, he, when I met him, he was uh, Dato Sri, right? Tony Fernandez, uh, today Tan Sri. So he shared uh, quite a good uh, 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 life experience and how he became such a good uh, leader that turned around Asia. Right, I, I, when I was in advertising, I dealt with Asia in the previous management before. Right? So that before Tony Fernandez took over. Right, and I can recognize right the culture and the uh, attitude of the people who works there, very different from today. Right after Tony Fernandez took over, so there's always a reason behind it. Right, leadership play a role in it. Right, and uh, so uh, if we have time, right, no, I can share more about that. Right, uh, I travel to Japan uh, quite frequently. Right? so this is a picture of me with uh, some of the Japanese uh, university students. Uh, they are one of the oldest uh, Japan. University, right? So they are wearing uh, this traditional uh, uniform, right? So it doesn't mean that I travel back in time, uh, or I, I, I am a mortal or immortal. So who have been living through <laughs> time? So it just that they have their uniform looks very uh, traditional, right? So uh, those are the interesting time when I had in Japan, right? Uh, okay, right. I was being interviewed on uh, BFM and uh, Panama TV. So these are just uh, some of the things that uh, I've done. Oh, this picture is uh, that's me with uh, uh, the our prime minister for tea with the uh, internet friend. Yeah, he had two sessions for uh, having tea with internet friends at uh, his uh, official residence. Yeah, so that's uh, where. I, okay, in my training, um, a lot of people the feedback they gave is that uh, they found it very interesting that people can learn a lot of things within short period of time. Right, that's where. Uh, the reason being is that uh, I use a certain methodology, right? So, do you want to know how to do it? Yes. Okay, great. Right, it's called accelerated learning, right? What does it mean? Any, any of you heard of accelerated learning before? 
no? For the first time, uh, some of you have, right? So it means uh, learning, uh, speed up the learning within a uh, short period of time. Right, why is that so? Because there's only 30% of teaching and 70% are based on experience. So there will be a lot of exercises, a lot of, uh, of interactions between the participants, right? And, and from there, you can actually experience right, some of the uh, simulations that are curated uh, for the participants, right? What else? Uh, there will be uh, a lot of activities and then you are encouraged to think, yeah? Because uh, you, uh, when you get to think, then you, you are able to uh, solve a lot of problems and also be able to deal with a lot more uh, methods, right? And uh, part of the, the things that increase the learning capacity is uh, the use of colors and uh, music, right, in the sessions. So that will speed up the process and uh, there will be case studies and also uh, a role play. Okay, so the question now is, uh, are you ready? Yes. Yes? Okay, <laughs> right, because you haven't started yet. Right. Okay, so good. Right, perceptions of conflict. Right. So what is your perception when I asked, uh, when I spoke of the word conflict, right? What is your first uh, thing come to your mind? Something positive or negative? Positive or negative? Negative, right. Most people, when they say the word conflict, right, it's like, oh, it's a negative thing. So, they said, which is a very interesting, when you um, uh, have a perception that it's a negative thing, are you comfortable dealing with it in the first place? Likely not, right? Because it's already negative, so it's, oh, I don't want to deal with it. So, um, the thing is, when you, we want to look into conflict, right, ideally is to understand what is conflict all about first before managing the conflict. Right, so, the, what is the definition of conflict? Anyone know what is the definition of conflict? Yeah, in dictionaries, if you look at it, right, there's a few versions, right, so to make it easy, I'm going to share with you, right, uh, basically means two parties do not agree on what matter. So what does it mean? It's just a disagreement. Yeah, do we have a lot of disagreement every day? Yes, yeah, what are examples of a disagreement that we have? Say, yeah, who sends the kids to school, right? Yeah, either you or your spouse or the uh, school bus, right? Or public transport. So a lot, a lot of questions, right? You know, if you don't have an agreement yet, so obviously there, there's a disagreement. Right, lunchtime, right? As a student or as a co colleague at work, right? So do you have an agreement in the first place every time he says, let's go for lunch, right? Do everybody say, oh, go KFC? <laughs> Not all right, some say, oh, go other McDonald's or Pizza Hut, right? So you don't get an agreement in the first place. So what do you do when you don't get a, an agreement? You discuss, you, know, you negotiate, right? Let's uh, go for this this round and we go for that next round, right? So we then do do it, right? So what we don't realize is that we deal with conflict equals disagreement every day. I right? just that we don't realize it, right? So why is it uh, become an issue? Right? Hang on. Yeah. So why is it become an issue? Because right, of our misconception of uh, conflict, right? So we thought it's something negative, something bad. So that's why we don't feel like uh, talking about it. So whenever we have a disagreement, but we try to avoid it. So it's become a norm, right? So we're so used to avoiding it and so on. Right? So let's see why people are uh, reluctant to deal with it, among other reasons, right? So there are a lot of reasons. So I'm going to share with you top five reasons why people are reluctant to deal with conflict, all right? So before we do that, uh, to make it fun, right? So find a partner, right? Find a partner. Uh, then uh, share with your partner, right? Uh, what do you think are the reasons why people are reluctant to uh, talk about it or, or want to resolve conflict, right? So just just look for uh, someone and then identify an A and the B first, right? Then I'd let you know uh, who starts. Okay. So yes, uh, both of you you can be a partner in this discussion, right? So uh, identify who's A and then who's B. Yeah. So everyone got a partner. Right. Yeah, so one person there does not have a partner. Perhaps uh, Cecilia can uh, be a partner with uh, that uh, person. Alright, so who's A? Over here, who's A? Alright, A. How about you? Who's A? Okay, yeah? Excuse me, who's A? You're A, right? Obviously, the other person is B, yeah? yeah how about you? A? Yeah? You're A, then B, A, B. Alright, how about here? A, okay. 
Right, so B suffers. <laughs> okay. Share, what do you think is the what among the many reasons, right? Why people are reluctant uh, to uh, resolve something or even talk about it. Right? So start now, right? Share with the person why what are the reasons that you think uh, people are reluctant? So they, they do not realize it, right? So that's why they are reluctant to talk about it. Okay, anybody else? Say again. Ego. Yeah, sometimes ego in the place here, so they stop people from uh, wanting to talk about it. Right. Uh, how about here? Troublesome. <laughs> A lot of trouble. Yeah. Okay, how about here? I uh, wanted to avoid misunderstanding. So they, they scared if they talk, then there will be more misunderstanding. Okay, good point. Yes, uh, how about the back? Low EQ. What's that? Low EQ. Low EQ. Okay, right. How about here? Try to avoid what? Hard feeling. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, somehow the. It, it, uh, this, it runs. Okay, good. Right, so I'm going to share with you right, the top five reasons. Okay, so first one, if uh, I'm not mistaken, uh, first one is what? Uh, limiting belief. Okay, but right. limiting belief is, don't think it's the first one. First one, let me see. Okay, so since uh, instead of waiting for it, right? Okay, since you mentioned limiting belief, right? What does it mean? Limiting belief means, right? So, uh, if, if I have a conflict with the, uh, or, or rather, instead of me having conflict, right, in the family, right, my father had a conflict with uh, his father. So that means my father uh, had a conflict with my great grandfather. And my grandfather actually also had the same conflict with the great grandfather. So if he's having an ongoing conflict uh, within the family for generations, right, so uh, what do you, what do I think, right, you know, do, do I think that that is going to be resolved uh, today? Likely not right. So that means right, my belief system is that no, it, it cannot be done. So you know, I have a limiting belief system. Right. So if I have a limiting belief system, someone comes to me and says, hey, you know, I have uh, just learned or come to a workshop right, in Utah about conflict management. Right? You know, perhaps you can try this approach. What do I say? Ah, no way. So I have a limiting belief. So I limit my belief system. Right? So that is uh, one of the main uh, top five reasons why people are reluctant to uh, resolve conflict. Alright, and then uh, the other reason is that uh, people are uh, uh, they, they are controlled by their emotions, right? So when uh, they the emotions is uh, they are too upset or too angry or too high, right? So the the uh, the emotions is uh, they they are distorted. So when they are too angry, right? There's a tendency that uh, our rational thinking is not there. So we will uh, be saying all the things that we do not mean. Yeah. So I'm going to explain more about that, that part later. All right. And uh, the next point. Uh, this is too long. Right? Oh, now okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, unable to manage the state is the state of emotions, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Right. Thirdly, uh, like some of you mentioned, right, sometimes we are uncomfortable right, to talk about uh, the conflict. So when we are not comfortable, we wouldn't want to uh, talk about it. 
Right? Paul is very interesting. Right? People are controlled by fear. Right? I give you an example. Right? Um, for those, uh, or rather, I, I use myself. No, this is the example, uh, not real case situation. But you say, you know, I, I'm studying in a, uh, a school, primary school. Right? So I'm, I'm uh, the one who sits in front of the class. Right? So one fine day, while sitting in the class, a teacher was not looking at the, uh, all the students, uh, marking some papers. Suddenly at the back, one shoes were thrown from the back. <laughs> Hit the blackboard and fall on the ground. And then teacher look at it. Oh, who throw the shoes? And then you look at the back, you know in the class there's one class bully. Right? Yeah. So you know and the, and the class bully is laughing, so you know it must be the class bully. He says, Oh teacher, teacher, and that's that person. So teacher asked the person now. True enough, the person came out without one shoes. Right. So guess what the teacher do? The teacher right, punish the person, right? And take a cane and hit the person. Right. So guess what happened after that? Right. After school, right, while walking out of the school gate, suddenly the class bully got with a few other students waiting for me. And then as I cross the <laughs> gate, right, they all jump on me and start hitting me. Right? Until oh, I start bleeding, until I need to go to the clinic and then I have a few stitches. Right. So uh, after that, uh, back to school. Right? A few months later. Right, while sitting in the class, and suddenly, different teacher. Suddenly, the shoes again. Hit the whiteboard and fall on the floor. Right? Teacher asks, who throw the shoes? You look back, uh -huh. again the police is laughing. But what do you do? You do nothing. Right? Why? Because of the, what happened earlier. So you are controlled by your fear. Right? And this fear is very interesting. Right? It actually doesn't happen while you are at school. But it actually happens right, beyond school days. Right, so because uh, it's a, uh, can affect our, us psychologically, for those of you who study psychology, right, you may understand this. So it uh, affects us psychologically. So when we uh, uh, finish school, when we finish studying uh, in the university, so we started working for quite a few years, and then you're promoted to be, say, the store manager of a uh, factory. So one day, right, uh, uh, after work time, right, before you leave the factory, you saw a, a truck come to the store of the factory, right? And then somebody uh, start to take things out of the factory uh, uh, store. And then you notice, right, one of the guys is a person who works in the factory. And you know this guy, person's background, he happens to be of the gangster family. Uh, so what happened when you see that? What do you do? Uh, you do nothing because you're scared. Oh, gangster, so if I go back, they're going to kill me, right? So if I say anything, I'd rather say nothing. Yeah. So because of the fear that happens in the past, right? Sometimes it's so strong, right? We are caused by that. So whenever there's a conflict, right? We rather not talk about it. Yeah. So this is an interesting point about when we are controlled by fear. Right. The next, uh, the fifth one is a, a lot of people still look at it, oh, it's a problem. Yeah, like it says, troublesome. Yeah. So what is a problem? Problem is like whenever they say a uh, breakdown, right? So for example, you drive a car, and the car breaks down, right? You cannot move forward, so there's a problem. What do you do? You fix the car, right? So if your car fixed, then you can drive and you continue with your journey, right? So the things about uh, conflict, right? Is it a problem? Do you need to fix it all the time? Depending on the circumstances, right? It's not necessary that you need to fix it. But because everybody perceives it as a problem that it needs to be fixed, you will say, oh, no, too much problem, right? Don't want to fix it. Yeah. So uh, that's why you know, people are reluctant to deal with uh, or resolve a conflict in that uh, sense. Okay, so another aspect of uh, conflict uh, in terms of our perception is that uh, there's always a positive side to conflict. So what are the positive sides or positive, positive aspect to conflict? Anyone? What can be a, a positive outcome out of it? Ah, great. Yes, yeah. You actually learn what the other parties uh, do like or do not like. So when people communicate about a certain disagreement with you, certain conflict with you, so they actually share with you what they like and what they don't like. So you actually get to know the person better, right? So same goes uh, with a husband-wife relationship, same goes with uh, bosses, same goes with colleagues or even friends, yeah? So you get to understand or learn more about them. Right. Another aspect of a uh, positive aspect is, uh, for example, when you are young, especially you fight with your brothers or sisters, 
right? So after you uh, manage to uh, uh, resolve uh, the fighting, so how's the relationship between the brother and sister, the bonding? Is it become stronger? Yeah. So this is uh, some of the positive aspect of uh, conflict. All right. Alright, okay, so next uh, uh, aspect is uh, conflict resolution essentials, right? So the point I want to raise is that uh, you know, conflict happens, right? There are even some many books written on conflict. So one of the books also say uh, conflict happens, right? So whether you like it or not, there's uh, bound to be disagreement. And then we don't realize it, we actually have it every day. Just like, you know, the uh, who sent the kids to school and uh, what to eat for lunch or dinner, alright? So, and, uh, conflict itself is not a uh, problem. But uh, the thing is, what people may not realize is like, you know, what is the difference between a crisis and a conflict? So, what is the difference between a crisis and a conflict? Conflict, we know earlier, is about disagreement. So, what is a crisis? Yeah, so the, the issue becomes too big, right? Like, for example, if you know that there's some smokes coming out from that uh, uh, machine, Right, and if you don't deal with it, then it, there's a fire, right? So fire, then it becomes a crisis. You need to deal with it, right? So the a, the, the conflict, uh, a crisis happens when the conflict not resolved. For example, in the workplace, if you have issue with uh, each other, if you do not resolve it, but right, guess what happened, right? So this is a real life experience uh, for one of my friends, uh, uni friends. Uh, we read law together. So he, uh, uh, he have, at the time he had a firm uh, partnership. So that firm have a few partners, and they have about 20 staff. Right. So one day after he uh, uh, came out from court and go back to the office, and then while walking to the office at the door, suddenly he saw a hey, white got uniformed policeman at the office. Right. And then he went in and checked with them. It seems right. You know, one of the um, two of the uh, they call legal club, right, uh, were in uh, uh, wanted to uh, were, were fighting. Right. So it seems because they have issue with each other that uh, were not being resolved for uh, quite a few months, right? And that ha so happened that morning, right? Uh, something triggered uh, the uh, person, and he went to the pantry, you know, where they make coffee and tea. He took the knife and came out, you know, wanted to stab the other person. So uh, everybody panicked, right? They got scared, so they quickly called the police because they don't want anybody to get stabbed, right? So and then. Yeah, this is a, a, a real life example of a conflicts not resolved even at the workplace can lead to violence. Yeah, between colleagues also, you know, people can uh, reach the point of wanting to stab uh, the other person. Another example is uh, my uh, school friends, right? So they after school they uh, became business partners. So the initially the business was small and then later it grow bigger and bigger and then one fine day they cannot. Uh, uh, agree with each other on certain issue, right? So end up uh, both being uh, very uh, short-tempered guys, right? So end up they were literally punching each other in the face. So when I heard about it, I went there and uh, helped them to resolve the matters, yeah? So uh, those are the things that they uh, when happen. Okay, so for uh, conflict management, right, there are many tools that uh, you can use, right? So I'm going to share with you one of the tools, right? Uh, which is very interesting. Uh, do you want to uh, learn uh, new tools, how you can uh, uh, manage conflict? Yes? Okay, so uh, the, do you have a piece of paper that you can write on? If you do not write, you know, put up your hand, you can uh, hand out some uh, paper. So what I need you to do is to write down uh, what is your expectation. For example, let's use this uh, talk as an example. What is your expectation of this talk? Right. For example, uh, I expect to learn how to uh, resolve every conflict in my life. Or I want to learn how to fly a plane. Or I want to uh, meet someone yeah, special from this uh, talk. So whatever your expectation, right, there's no right or wrong answer. You know what I mean? Yeah, whatever you expect right, from this talk, right, you just write it down. So this is a process by itself. So the more you experience a participate track, the more you will understand later when I debrief to you as to the, uh, this process. All right, everybody got that? So start now, right, write down what do you expect out of this uh, uh, talk, right? Anything, yeah, it's uh, whatever you come to your mind, you just write it down. 
right? There's no wrong or right answer, right? It's part of the process. I will share with you uh, how does it work. So this is a, one of the very good tools you can use in managing conflict, right? Any questions? Right, straightforward, right? So just write down. Okay. So let's uh, hear it from you, right? What is your expectations, right? Everyone will have a different expectations. Just hear it from you. What is your expectation? Yes. Alright, so everybody heard that? Yeah, there is a long wishing list uh, about personal growth and uh, be a better student uh, for a short two hour stop. Uh. Okay, good. Alright, how about you, uh, sir? Some skills and experience. Uh, okay. Experience okay, wonderful. How about you? Uh, okay, new skills, new people. Right, how about you? Okay, maintain a uh, relationship with friends and family. Usually you refer to good relationship, huh? Okay. Yes, how about you? Uh, learn how to manage the conflict while doing the assignments. Learn how to manage conflict while doing the assignments. Okay. Right. Yes, how about you? <coughs> how to manage conflict to achieve a win-win situation. How to achieve a win-win situation. Right. How about Okay, with minimum effort. So very good. So, anyone have a uh, extraordinary uh, expectations? Yes. How to identify a conflict? How to identify a conflict? All right. So, anybody else have an extraordinary uh, expectation? Like, you know, learn how to uh, drive fast on the highway. You know, so still uh, alive. <laughs> Preventing conflict, yeah. Uh, anybody else? No extraordinary. Okay, so this process, right, it's actually a process called. Apologies, uh, this is the first time I'm using this gadget. Right? So I don't know why uh, it's actually <laughs> auto uh, move. Right? expectations right so for example I ask you right what do you expect from this uh, uh, talk so uh, some of you say one win-win situation one learn new skills one meet new people I want to uh, identify a conflict right so most of what you say is right is something that we will touch on right we won't go very deep but something we will touch on right so extraordinary one like for example learn how to drive fast on the uh, the uh, not South Expressway, like uh, 200 km an hour, still and still be alive. Right? Nobody says that. Right? So if it says that, so I will uh, inform you, right? we won't be learning that in this two hours talk. So that is managing your expectation. So at the end of the session, you won't be disappointed and say, hey, you know, I don't get to learn how to drive fast. You know what I mean? Yeah. So managing expectation is one of the tools that you can use is in managing conflict, managing uh, any uh, disagreement or misunderstanding. Okay? Alright. So let's move on. Okay. So uh, in managing conflict, it's also good to understand that there's a difference between people in many aspects. Right? In terms of personality, in terms of behavior, in terms of uh, some of you mentioned earlier, ego. Right? So, and uh, different people have a different uh, conflict resolution style. Right? For example, right, some people Right, how do they deal with conflict is? Right, what is this? A cowboy, right? So what does a cowboy do? 
cover will shoot first, stop later, right? So, and if you see uh, a lot of uh, uh, cowboy movies, right, it's very interesting. After they shoot already, and then they walk to the person, and then they kick the person. Are you dead yet? <laughs> you see that? Yeah, so it's very funny, right? The person is already dead. Uh, you shoot first, then only you ask. Right, so, it's, and then the next one. Alright, sorry. Uh, uh, okay, so the next one is uh, James Bond. James Bond, how does he do it? He don't simply shoot first, right? So he will actually uh, investigate and he will analyze and then before he actually kill, right? Because he got the license to kill, right? So there's uh, two different uh, uh, extreme ex approach that uh, most people do, right? Just to share with you, right? So I'm sure a lot of you have seen uh, cowboys approach, right? Yeah? yeah, in your life, there are people in your life that you meet, right? They are mad that uh, they always shoot first and then talk later. They always accuse you of something first before they ask you why. Yeah. So uh, some they will actually talk to you first and find out before they uh, look at you. So uh, um, the thing is that the people who are using cowboy approach, right? It's not that they are good or bad. It's just that they are not aware sometimes, right? As to their approach is not the best approach. Right. So uh, if you have uh, learned conflict management, you will identify what are the best approach that you can take on. Okay, so here I'm going to share with you a few approaches uh, which are common in management. Right, uh, five approaches. Right, one of it is uh, called collaboration. Right, here is an example how they will say things while they want to get collaboration from uh, each other for a conflict uh, resolution. Right, there seems to be a different opinion here. Let's get to the bottom of it. Right, or they will say let's get several people from each department together. Right, and discuss the uh, options. Right, the second is uh, obliging. Right, obliging is like um, you know they will uh, just give in to what the people want, right? Uh, in order to resolve the disagreement, so they said, oh, I don't care whatever you know you want is okay with me, right? Or they say, you know you are the expert, you know what do you think, right? So they leave it to the other person to uh, to uh, decide as to the issue at hand, right? So the uh, third one is uh, dominating. Uh, so these people are similar to a cowboy approach, uh, Instead of shoot first, they, they just uh, a bulldozer. You heard of the phrase, right? Bulldozer, they are way through one. Right? So dominating, right? They say, I don't care, just do what I ask you to do. Yeah. So they just uh, want their way. Right? It doesn't matter, no, that's the way it is. So they just push their way through in order to resolve the disagreement. Right? Uh, uh, for one is avoiding. Right? So people sometimes they avoid. You can put this on hold temporarily so, so that we can talk about it later. Right? So another example, they say, I haven't seen all the facts, let's get the uh, back to you when I manage to get all the facts. Right? So they put postpone uh, right, the issue. So this is uh, what we call avoiding, and the uh, fifth one is compromising. Right? I can see we have a different opinion, and then what's your bottom line? Or we all have to give in and take and, uh, in order to get to work together, so let's put things on the table. Right? So these five methods, right? Uh, uh, which one is uh, uh, good and which one is bad? Anyone? Uh, obliging. Obliging is not good. Alright, uh, anybody else? Say again? Dominating, Dominating is no good. Alright. Others? Avoiding is no good. Okay, so uh, wait, uh, the, this is very interesting. Right. Uh, all five is neither good nor bad. Why? Because it depends very much on circumstances. Right. For example, dominating seems to be not the uh, ideal approach. But when you have a life crisis, for example, you are a surgeon, and you have a team of surgeons, but you are the most experienced one, you want to make sure that you, this person is being safe. Right. So he says, you know, this is my opinion about this, right? let's get to work on it. Right. So you want to push your way so that you know, this life can be safe. Right. So it depends very much on the circumstances. So it's no no good or bad right, of these five different approaches. Very much depends on circumstances. So uh, a lot of uh, people have a misunderstanding or miscommunication that lead to conflict or or even hatred with each other because they do not understand. Right, a lot of things. Right, there's no straightforward good or bad. Right? But because we're so used to good or bad, right. So if you're bad, I don't want to talk to you. You're good, no, be my friend. So they're so uh, stuck with that kind of idea. So that's where people uh, become too emotional. 
right? Because they are not open enough to explore further, right? And looking into different uh, perspective, all right? Okay. So in order to uh, have a uh, uh, change in the environment or change of uh, thoughts, right? We need to have awareness. Yeah. Uh, in, if you do not have awareness about where you are, then you will not be able to move forward. For example, if your friends call you on the phone and ask you, hey, I'm lost, Hello? Where, how do I uh, get about to go to KLCC? Right? What is your first question to them? Yeah, you, you ask them where they are, right? Yeah, so same goes with our learning, personal development. But we need to know where we are first so that we can move forward. Right? So that's what I mean by uh, uh, awareness uh, before uh, change. All right? Okay, so I'm going to share with you the, uh, the various types of uh, conflict, right? Some of you mentioned that your expectation is you want to learn and understand the various types of conflict. First one is internal, right? So internal means what? No, sometimes right, we are uh, undecided, right? What are the options that we want to choose? So we are in, in disagreement with ourselves, right? For example, if you are a very good looking guy and you're not married yet, a lot of girls are after you, right? So you are like spot of choice. Okay, which one to choose? Yeah, uh, same goes with the girl, right? A lot of guys going after you. And then, you know, you don't know which guy to choose. So it's part of choice, right? Or you get a, a lot of job offers. Or you get a lot of business opportunities. So when you're undecided, so this is the example of uh, internal conflict, right? So the opposite of that is external, right? So when it's external, uh, they have different categories, different uh, types. Right? First one, uh, in the external is uh, this uh, agreement with your family members. So, uh, husband and wife, uh, uh, parents and children, uh, with mother-in-law, they are very common complaints that people have is, uh, with the mother-in-law or even father-in-law kind of uh, issues, right? Next is uh, when they are at work, right? They have a conflict with their boss or with their colleagues or even as to uh, the suppliers or even with customers, all right? So, uh, in a social, social is where they join a associations or sports clubs, right? In the clubs, uh, they also have a conflict with each other. Right. So when uh, people are not able to resolve that, right? You know, what's the outcome? Right. Especially you know when I was in the advertising industry, right? What do people do when they cannot resolve the conflict? They go to the pub and drink. So drink and get drunk and smoke and end up you know uh, look like something like that. Yeah. So it's quite a cute picture. So I just use it to attract their attention. Yeah. So uh, those are the internal and external. Uh, so another aspect of it is like there's an open uh, conflict. So if I have something I disagree with you, I say, hey, I disagree with you. But uh, the other side of it is what? What is the opposite of open? It's a close, right? People don't talk to you. But what do they do? Right? Like just like this picture, right? They talk behind our back, right? So example uh, of that is like for example, I give you an example like my mother. <laughs> Right. If she's uh, not happy with my brother, what does she do? Instead of talking to my brother, she will tell me, tell my the other brothers, tell my aunties, tell my uh, uh, uncles, tell everybody else around, around in the world except my brother. Yeah. So, you know, can you relate to that? Somebody in your life are like that. Instead of telling you, you know, they will tell everybody else. Right. So, this is uh, what it means by a close uh, conflict. Instead of uh, deal directly, openly with you, they go behind uh, your back. Right. And uh, is it common in our uh, culture? Yeah, our Asian culture is uh, quite common, right? Uh, in the uh, Western uh, culture, they are more open, right? Our culture, we, we tend to be more close and talk behind. So, uh, very dangerous. Uh, if you ask me, right, I prefer to people to be open and uh, you know what uh, the things that uh, they are not happy about, so you can deal with it and manage it, right? But if they don't tell you, so, you know, uh, uh, this is where the danger or risk is, right? Okay, so other categories of conflicts are uh, is a uh, very much ethnic based, right? For example, culture, difference of culture, different ethnic group, right? They can have their conflict. For example, in terms of the cultural, right? Uh, the Westerners, right? They usually wear shoes and go into the house, right? Yeah. So, but uh, in our culture, usually we leave the shoes outside. So when they come to, uh, uh, if you bring a friend right, to the house, and then the, the person walk in with the shoes, right? And then your parents uh, look at it and it's like, you know? So, you know, they're obviously upset with your friends, right? But your friend doesn't know, yeah? So this is an example of cultural, 
But the next one is religious, uh, which is very sad, uh, getting uh, very common around the world. And the people go to war also because of religion. Right? Language or dialect group? Uh, this is uh, another interesting example. In terms of dialect, uh, language is uh, common, uh, we can understand. You know, if you don't understand uh, a language, then you can have certain uh, misunderstanding. In terms of dialect, it's like uh, for the Chinese, right? We have uh, Hokkien, Hakka, Cantonese, Teochew. Right. How many of you are Hakka in the room? Any Hakka? No, no Hakka in the room. Okay. So for Hakka people, right, uh, in the China, the older days of China, they uh, usually work in the hill and the farm uh, uh, and the field. So when they talk to each other, they tend to speak very loudly to each other. Right. And they're so used to speaking loudly, right, even in the house while eating dinner, they also speak very loudly to each other. Right. The thing is like, oh, one of the uh, children, uh, one of the uh, kids uh, of a Hakka family uh, uh, managed to study very well, right? And then go to school, go to universities, and then now the opportunity to work in the city, right? So guess what? <laughs> when he got a job, he worked in the, this firm, he just uh, joined in, and then when he talked to everybody, he speak very loudly to everybody, right? So how do you feel if someone you know, in your workplace speak very loud to you? <laughs> Right. To this person, the Hakka person, it's like it's norm, right? I grew up with it, so I wouldn't know that you know, this will have uh, uh, disturbed people. Yeah. So this is uh, one, one very interesting uh, example of a Hakka dialect. Yeah. All right. So uh, the Hakka dialect. Next is uh, racial group, national, as in like Singaporean and Malaysian. You know, they say things about each other, right? Uh, ancestor or kinship. Right, this is uh, like for example, uh, some people from the royal family, right? They are royal family uh, member, are uh, very kind, they are very noble, right? They treat people nicely, but also they are some on the other side of the fence. Right? They say, oh, I'm the royal blood, you know, who are you talking to me? Right, so that also cause ill feelings and uh, another disagreement, right? So that's a ancestor, uh, because they come from royal family, they think, you know, uh, they are the better than others, right? But people, all human beings are equal, right? And then gender orientation, for example, you know, male will have issues against female, and female says, you know, men are like that. Is it common? You know, women complain, men are like that. So this is a gender a conflict, yeah? Or men will say, oh, women are like that, always nagging, always complain. So they have their issues against each other in terms of male, female, right? And uh, uh, number eight, it's sexual orientation group means what? Uh, some people, uh, uh, homosexuals in terms of like gay men or lesbian uh, uh, women, right? So uh, people who are heterosexuals means the uh, one with the, uh, the, uh, the opposite sex, right? Will find that uh, you cannot have a same sex uh, relationship, so they were against that, right? It become an issue right now. This on the on the in the news, yeah. Right. So this is an example of that. Okay. So, uh, back to the main key uh, topic, right? Why staff uh, punch customer? Do you want to know? Anyone? Yes. All right. So, why does it happen? Right, because, right, um, if, if it happens, right, what do we do is uh, the tool set, among the many tools that we give, we do a conflict audit, right? So, if you go to a firm, a company, if they want us to look into it, right, we do an audit. So, there are certain processes, certain tools to do it. So after the audit, then they can find out. So just share with you, uh, how does it happen when uh, people uh, want to punch each other? It's because of uh, lack of understanding of EQ. What is EQ? Emotional portion or emotional intelligence. Right, so how many of you have read this book? By uh, Dr. Daniel Coleman. Right, psychology students usually have read it. Right, so it's a thick book, right? So to save your time, right, you know, instead of uh, reading the whole book, let me share with you two points, right, which is uh, very unique from this book. First, what is EQ, right? It explains deeply the uh, EQ. It means, right, understanding of your own feeling, right, and, and uh, before you can understand the feeling of others. So emotional intelligence is your ability to understand your feelings and understand the feelings of others. So if you are able to understand people's feelings, you will not go around and say, hey, how come you're so slow one? Or how come you, you're so stupid one? You know, there are people who go around saying things like that. Yeah, believe me, even corporate, you know, multinational uh, or public research people still do that. But unfortunately, they, they are not aware because their EQ is not so high. 
the IQ wise is very high. Why? Because a lot of people, right, they from degree they study master, after master they study PhD. Right? So they find that a lot of things that they can do is so easy. But the people around them, their subordinates say, how come they all so slow one? How come they all do not know how to do this? They forgot. Hey, you have studied until PhD, obviously your IQ is higher, right? They haven't studied yet, so you cannot blame them. But because the EQ not so high, you go around and blame others. Hey, how come you're so slow or you're so stupid? Yeah. So that is uh, uh, the uh, one aspect of EQ. The other aspect of EQ is, right, when people's emotions are high, right, very, uh, they are angry, right, what happens to their intelligence? The intelligence goes down the drain. Right? Have you experienced before? When you're angry with someone, right, you will see all kinds of things that you do not mean. For example, husband and wife, so common when they are in argument, they'll say, I divorce you. Then the other the person says, you say one, huh? okay, let's divorce. But do they really mean it? No, they love each other. That's why they're so passionate and emotional about each other. But unfortunately, when your emotional is too high, your intelligence goes down. So you become irrational. So you see things you know, not rational. So that is the important uh, point raised in the, this book about EQ. So when uh, people are uh, emotionally high, angry, right? right? It is not the time to solve or resolve problem. There's time you, for you to get the person to calm down, to cool down, right? in order for the intelligence to come back up. So that people can sit down and be rationalized. Right? So this is the one important aspect of EQ and emotions that uh, you need to look on into when you're dealing with the uh, conflict. But other aspect of it is that people to uh, have a self-awareness as to different personalities also play a role in affecting or uh, causing uh, conflict to happen. All right. So uh, the time now is according to my watch, right? It's eight thirty. So how many of you need to go? Or can I extend it to like another ten minutes uh, so that I can share as much as I can for you? Yes. All right. Great. So. Uh, for personal, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, self-awareness, right? Uh, self-awareness, sorry, it doesn't go back. Okay, it's about understanding the personality. How many of you have heard of a personality assessment? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, have you done the personality assessment on yourself? NLP assessment, all right. So there are many personality assessments in the market. Right, so one of them I want to share with you is a pretty straightforward one. I like to share this as a for as a beginner, right? Because they only have four personalities, right? So the four personalities that um, uh, uh, of this uh, is called uh, DISC, right? D for a uh, dream, but because it shows that it reflects on their impatience, that they want things fast, right? So this is a D personality, right? I is someone who's very interactive. They like to be, be with people. Everywhere they go, right, they will invite someone to go along with them. Let's go shopping together, let's go lunch together, let's go uh, toilet together. <laughs> Have you, you know, recognize that? There are people who love to be with people. So, uh, the tendency of them is because they love to be with people. Sometimes, right, they overlook in doing their tasks because they're so busy talking to others. Yeah? So, because they're highly interactive. Right, as is someone who is very steady. If you give them a task, right? They will ask you uh, all the facts and details as to when they you want it to be completed. What are the support you can give? What are the information? So they will just do it and deliver. So very steady, right? Then then the C is someone who is compliance. Everything must follow by the book, right? If you ask them to do something, right? They ask you what is the rules and regulations, right? So they want to refer to it. Right. So here, the personalities also can affect right, an individual's uh, uh, understanding of each other. So it can lead to miscommunication. I'll share with you an example. Right. If I am a HR people, right, uh, I am a C personality, and you are a D personality, you want to apply for D. So what do you do? You need to fill out a form. Right. And D personality, usually they are uh, very macro, they look at big picture, they are not into detail. So they just fill the, the main criteria and then they give it to the HR person who is a C personality. Right, guess what happens? The C personality will say, oh, you need to complete this form. Then says, what is this? I complete the main thing, right? So, no, 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 you need to complete the rest of the things, like the date, la, the uh, time, la, and then your uh, staff number. I say, hey, you know me, uh, so, okay, okay, okay. So do it, but uh, what's missing now is a comma. 
uh, give it to the person. person says, no, 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 you haven't complete. I said, what do you mean by not complete? You don't have a comma here. So if you are the personality, what do you think of this person? Wasting my time or, or trying to give uh, uh, trouble to me, right? Making you know the life difficult for me. Right? But because I don't understand the personality, difference in personality, I jump into conclusion, this person is giving me you know, trouble or want to make life difficult for me. So this is where conflict arises when people of different personalities do not understand each other. Yeah? So that's uh, one aspect of it. All right. So um, what else? Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Here, I just want to uh, mention about uh, our EQ. Right. So, what other what other aspect of EQ that uh, we need to uh, take note of is right. So, it's uh, anger. Fear, sadness, and disgust, and surprises. Yeah. So the methodology, another tool that you can uh, use, right, to uh, work on conflict, it's uh, called CALM. Right? It's an abbreviation, right? C stands for something. A stands for something. L stands for something. So C stands for clarify the issue. A stands for address the matter. Uh, L stands for listen to the others, and M manage your way to resolution. So this is like uh, something easy for us to remember that uh, we can. Hang on. Again, the uh, it jump. <laughs> right. So you want to take a picture of that, right? Okay, instead of uh, you rushing to take picture or low resolution, right? Later, what you can do is uh, you give me your uh, particular, right? I can uh, email the, some of the slides to you so that, you know, I want to add as much value as I can to you so that you can uh, learn something and use it, all right? Okay, so uh, in conflict uh, management, it's important to understand Right, things uh, usually doesn't happen like on the surface, just like a iceberg. Right, what we see is a small part on the top, and then what we don't see is uh, something underneath. Right, so let's say you know two person is uh, having an argument. Right, they're probably arguing over uh, someone borrowing uh, one person borrowing a pen from the other without asking for permission. Right, you see, hey, what small matter you know want to argue so heated argument. Right, so what's uh, he saying? Uh, it's, uh, it's a what we don't see is uh, what's happening uh, underneath the iceberg, right? So underneath the iceberg is usually something happened in the past between the two person, right? Say in the past the person has been borrowing pen or other stationary tools, right? Which the person never returned. You know what I mean? So if the person has been doing that to you all this while, right? And today this person just borrow a pencil, which doesn't cost a lot, but your upset has been like all built up. Right, and then you know, when uh, you trigger by the, this incident, so you go and scold that person. But other outsiders look at it and say, "Why small matter? Actually, you know, it's not just that. What's on top of the iceberg is the things underneath." Same goes with relationship, husband and wife. Right? Why husband and wife want to argue over small things? Right? Because something in the past, right? Husband may have uh, forgotten the anniversary. Is it a big thing for wife? You know, if uh, anniversary date, yeah, uh, but they. Right? Or husband promised to buy a diamond ring or diamond uh, necklace but you know, did not fulfill until today, 10 years or 30 years already. <laughs> the wife will still remember, right? So those are the things that uh, happen right? uh, between uh, husband and wife or between uh, colleagues right? that uh, we actually look at the top, sometimes we need to understand what's happening at the bottom. So that's where uh, when we do an uh, audit, uh, a conflict audit, right, we can actually find out what happened after that. Alright, so how to be successful is to, uh, if you have a, uh, learn the skills and you got to practice it, and then uh, for, from a conflict, right, where there's a disagreement, you negotiate for an agreement, and you've got to keep your uh, words for it. Because some people, after a while, they, they tend uh, to forgot, you know, they, they uh, promise something, so they did not keep to their word. So uh, to be successful is to plan for uh, following up on what we have uh, agreed on, right, and uh, monitor that, right. So and uh, support uh, each other in their commitment to that uh, agreement. Right? So uh, yeah, so usually I give a I give, all right. So today uh, I, I was rushing here, so I didn't manage to get the gift. Apologies of that. It's a gift. It's uh, it's from the company uh, Honda, right. 
So uh, you should put that in. Okay, action exercise, right? So what I want you to do is uh, write down right, on a piece of paper. If you need a fresh piece of paper, right, uh, let us know. So we give you, write down um, uh, what is the one thing that uh, you, you like the most from this talk? What are the tools, some of the tools that you like, right, from this uh, talk, right? Or you want to learn more about that tools, right? Just write down that request. Right, put your name, mobile, and email. Right, I also give you will uh, forward you. Uh, you put there a note that you want also uh, some of the slides, and also we want some free newsletter. So I uh, do write newsletter and uh, give to my participants. But right? share with them some of the new tools, a new approach that they can take on in how to handle uh, conflict uh, management. All right, so. So I have a, a Facebook page, right? It's called Gary Child Training, right? Uh, if you log into that, uh, I'll share pictures and uh, I also share tips on uh, that page. If you have any questions, right? You can either email me here, right? Uh, support at uh, GaryChild.com, right? Or you can uh, leave a questions uh, on my uh, Facebook page. Uh, so if I uh, if not uh, in training, so I, I will uh, answer some questions, right? Okay, stop this. Just keep on changing. If you have any question now, right? No, please ask so that I can answer uh, before uh, you finish writing uh, that uh, uh, question uh, or things that you like about uh, this talk. Right? Anyone have a question? Yes. Still processing. All right, very good. Yeah. So if if we if we are feel a bit shy to, to, to ask now, then you can write the question down. <laughs> okay. So I can answer you. So yes. All right. Okay. How do I deal with it? Right. So uh, my suggestion is, right, uh, you got to have a, uh, a conversation with them, right? You know, have a time whereby they are not uh, upset, they are calm, right? You know, go to a neutral place, right? Neutral place, is not your boss room, uh, or not your father's uh, room. Yeah. So a neutral place can be a meeting room, or it can be a cafe, right? Where it's not too noisy, a yeah, coffee house, right? So let's have a you know one-to-one uh, -one conversation, you know, sharing of opinions and uh, thoughts. Yeah. So share with them that you know you are uh, concerned, right, about uh, you know the uh, communication between both of you, right. If it's concerned about work or concerned about relationship with the family members, uh, raise that concern without making the person wrong. Why do I say that, right? Most people, right, sometimes uh, they, they're living their life right, without a realization or awareness about uh, the impact of their action. Yeah. Not everybody are aware of that. Right? Because every time we look, right, we look at other people, we never or uh, seldom look back in ourselves. Right? So uh, you should share with them the concern, right? And if you want to say it in a way whereby it's for a win win situation, it's not to put the person down, but you want to have a better rapport or relationship with that person. That's why you raise this matter. So talk to that person about your concern. Yeah. So when the person listens to it, uh, the person may respond either uh, positively or negatively, but you know, it doesn't matter. Important thing is it's get communicated. You know, a, a positive aspect of it uh, is you get communicated about like or dislike, right? So important that person also get awareness that oh this is happening. Let's say if the person is a boss, right? The boss may not realize that he has been like pushing everybody to the wall, and that's why you know the retention rate is so uh, low. Everybody is leaving the company. Uh, the boss always go around ask how come uh, people cannot stay here long? Because they are not having that awareness. 
So when you have a conversation like that with the boss, then the person, ah, have that aha moment. You know what I mean? Oh, I didn't know that, I didn't realize. So, you know, they are more willing to open to suggestion. Yeah, so this is uh, what I would uh, propose that uh, you no know, one person can do when they are dealing with a domineering person, right? But if you happen to be in a very serious issue, right? So the person not likely want to listen to you, uh, is respectful the party, right? To mediate the, the situation, right? Let's say you know uh, if the person happens to be your boss, right? You can ask a uh, someone this person respect. Right, to help to sit down and mediate about the, what can be done about the situation for the betterment of everybody. Uh, so because right, if the person respects someone, the person is more willing to listen you know, to uh, your message, right, which this person you know, understands need to be resolved. Yeah. So that, uh, does that answer your question? Yes. All right. Thank you. yeah. You're most welcome. Anybody else? Yes. Okay. Let's say we're dealing with someone who prefers not to go head on uh, to the content. They prefer to either they keep quiet or they go beat around the bush and don't say things around. Mm. What do you think is best to overcome that this kind of situation? Okay. All right. Thank you very much for your questions. Right. Usually, people who are avoiding uh, to to resolve, right? They have uh, two possible reasons. One, uh, they don't have trust and belief in you. So they said, whatever I say, no use one. Especially, you know, uh, in the past experience, uh, every time I say something to you, you tend to brush it off. So to me, it's like I've given up. So I say, no point. Every time I say something, you brush me off, right? So now you ask me uh, how uh, I can help you. I say, you know, in my mind, I say, no way. So you know, I will avoid, you know, at, uh, at all opportunity. Uh, second possible reason is, right, I have a hidden agenda, right? I'm here to make life difficult for you. So I pretend uh, you know, to do something, but then uh, no, I do the opposite. Right? Every time you want to talk to me, I award you because I have a hidden agenda. So you know, in reality, right, in life, right, you know, sometimes people are like that. So they have uh, a hidden agenda. They want to uh, sabotage you. Right? So they will pretend that they are working with you, but then they are not. Right? So you have to deal with that as well. Yeah? So does, does that answer your questions? I mean, it doesn't un uh, answer the conflict that you're having, but it answer your uh, your uh, your curiosity as to you know why people does not uh, want to deal with it directly, right? Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that would take more time, to right? No. Uh, ah. So that leads to this very good question and uh, point, right? Yeah. We are having a uh, conflict management program, right, in Utah. It's a two days program, right? The price here is so reasonable because uh, in the corporate, right, the fees is uh, two times or three times more than this fees. But you know, thanks to Utah and uh, 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 the generosity, right? You no know, one to contribute more to community. Right, so that's why I'm willing also to you know uh, reduce my fees so that everybody can benefit. So if you attend this program, you can learn more tools and skills. Like right? Elchus can see uh, specific uh, issues that how you can learn how to handle it. Okay, right. So you have uh, one of these. Yeah, you can pick it on the way up. All right. So the dates are all uh, indicated. The price are indicated. Seriously, if you go and check outside the uh, corporate training, right, easily a uh, thousand. Uh, Five and above, right? I have personally attended a training program for even ten thousand ringgit, right? So I, I believe in learning, right? Lifelong learning, right? Uh, not just learning from one guru, you learn from different gurus, right? My learning took me to Australia, to Japan, to the US, to UK, all over the world. So I learned from the best. So that's how you know I appreciate you know what I learned. I can share with all of you. All right? Okay. Anybody else? Or oh, we need to call it. Uh, the end of the session because of uh, the time. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, you, you, is it okay to answer more questions? Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. So if you have boyfriend, girlfriend's uh, questions, you are too shy to ask, then you can ask at the end of the session. Uh. All right. Okay. All right. So with that, all right. I thank you so much. All right. So what I want to share is I appreciate uh, your attendance here and your your uh, questions. Right, uh, appreciate you know your, your 
your questions because uh, it helped me to understand because I also learn uh, new things every day but so I also get to understand uh, what are your concerns uh, uh, from day to day right so with uh, with that well thank you so much uh, in Japanese they say domo arigato gozaimasu thank you very much right thank you thank you give yourself a round of applause for the guest thank you for your valuable sharing and insight on why we would like to invite Ms. Lin Boyd Yen, Director, Center for Extension Education, to present a token of appreciation to Mr. Gary Chow. shows that it reflects on their impatience that they want things fast right so this is a D personality right I is someone who's very interactive they like to be with, with people everywhere they go right they will invite someone to go along with them let's go shopping together let's go lunch together let's go uh, toilet together <laughs> have you you don't recognize that there are people who love to be with people so uh, the tendency of them is because they love to be with people Sometimes, right, they overlook in doing their task because they're so busy talking to others. Yeah? So, because they're highly interactive. S right? is someone who is very steady. If you give them a task, right, they will ask you uh, all the facts and details as to when they, you want it to be completed, what are the support you can give, what are the information. So, they will just do it and deliver. So, very steady. Right? Then, then the C is someone who is compliant. Everything must follow by the book. Right. If you ask them to do something, right, they ask you what is the rules and regulations. Right. So they want to refer to it. Right. So here the personalities also can affect right, an individual's uh, uh, understanding of each other. So it can lead to miscommunication. I'll share with you an example. Right. If I am a HR people, right, uh, I am a C personality, and you are a D personality, you want to apply for D. So what do you do? You need to fill out a form. Right. And deep personality usually they are uh, very macro, they look at the big picture, they are not into detail. So they just feel the, the main criteria and then they give it to the HR person who is a C personality. Right. Guess what happened? The C personality will say, oh you need to complete this form. Then says, what is this? I complete the main thing. Right? So no, 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 you need to complete the rest of the thing. Like the date, la, the uh, time, la, and then your uh, staff number. They say, hey, you know me. Uh, so, okay, 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 so do it, but uh, what's missing now is a comma. Uh, give it to the person. The person says, no, 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 you haven't complete. I said, what do you mean I'm not complete? You don't have a comma here. So, if you are the personality, what do you think of this person? Wasting my time or trying to give uh, uh, trouble to me, right? Making, you know, the life difficult for me. Right? But because I don't understand the personality, difference in personality, I jump into conclusion, this person is giving me you know, trouble, or want to make life difficult for me. So this is where conflict arises when people of different personalities do not understand each other. Yeah? So that's uh, one aspect of it. Alright, so, um, what else? Okay. Okay. Right. Okay, here I just want to uh, mention about uh, our EQ, right? So what are the, as what are the aspects of EQ that uh, we need to uh, need to take note of? Okay. Right, so it's uh, anger, fear, sadness, and disgust, and surprises. Yeah. So the methodology, uh, another tool that you can uh, use right, to uh, work on conflict, it's, uh, it's called CALM, right? it's an abbreviation. 
right? C stands for something, A stands for something, L stands for something. So C stands for clarify the issue, A stands for address the matter, uh, L stands for listen to the others, and M manage your way to resolution. So this is like uh, something easy for us to remember that uh, we can, hang on, again, uh, it jumped. <laughs> So you want to take a picture of that, right? Okay, instead of uh, you rushing to take picture or low resolutions, right? Later, what you can do is uh, you give me your uh, particular, right? I can uh, email the, some of the slides to you so that, you know, I want to add as much value as I can to you so that you can uh, learn something and use it, all right? Okay, so uh, in conflict uh, management, it's important to understand, right? Things uh, usually doesn't happen like on the surface, just like an iceberg, right? What we see is a small part on the top, and then what we don't see is uh, something underneath, right? So let's say you know, two person is uh, having an argument, right? They're probably arguing over uh, someone borrowing, uh, one person borrowing a pen from the other without asking for permission, right? You see, hey, one small matter, you know, once you argue, so heated argument, right? So what's uh, he saying? Uh, it's, uh, it's a what we don't see is uh, what's happening uh, underneath the iceberg, right? So underneath the iceberg is usually something happened in the past between the two person, right? Say in the past the person has been borrowing pen or other stationary tools, right? Which the person never returned. You know what I mean? So if the person has been doing that to you all this while, right? And today this person just borrowed a pencil, which doesn't cost a lot, but your upset has been like all built up. Right, and then you know, when uh, you trigger by the, this incident, so you go and scold that person. But other outsiders look at it and say, "Why small matter? Actually, you know, it's not just that. What's on top of the iceberg is the things underneath." Same goes with relationship, husband and wife. Right? Why husband and wife want to argue over small things? Right? Because something in the past, right? Husband may have uh, forgotten the anniversary. Is it a big thing for wife? You know, if uh, anniversary date, yeah, uh, but they. Right? Or husband promised to buy a diamond ring or diamond uh, necklace but you know, did not fulfill until today, 10 years or 30 years already. <laughs> the wife will still remember, right? So those are the things that uh, happen right? uh, between uh, husband and wife or between uh, colleagues right? that uh, we actually look at the talk sometimes we need to understand what's happening at the bottom. So that's where uh, when we do an uh, audit, uh, a conflict audit, right, we can actually find out what happened after that. All right. So how to be successful is to, uh, if you have a, uh, learn the skills and you go to practice it, and then uh, for, for a conflict, right, where there's a disagreement, you negotiate for an agreement, and you're going to keep your uh, words for it. Because some people, after a while, they, they tend uh, to forgot, you know, they, they uh, promised something, so they did not keep to their word. So uh, to be successful is to plan for uh, following up on what you have uh, agreed on, right, and uh, monitor that, right. So and uh, support uh, each other in their commitment to that uh, agreement. Right? So uh, yeah, so usually I give a, a gift, right. So today uh, I, I was rushing here, so I didn't manage to get the gift. Uh, for this of that, it's a gift. It's, uh, it's from the company uh, Honda, right. So uh, you should put that in. Okay, action exercise, right. So what I want you to do is uh, write down right, on a piece of paper. If you need a fresh piece of paper, right, uh, let us know. So we give you write down uh, uh, what is the one thing that uh, you, you like the most from this talk. What are the tools? Some of the tools that you like, right, from this uh, talk, right? Or you want to learn more about that tools, right? Just write down that request, right? Put your name, mobile, and email, right? I also give you will uh, forward you. Uh, you put there a note that you want also uh, some of the slides. And also, we want some free newsletter. So I uh, do write newsletter and uh, give to my participants. So I share with them some of the new tools and new approach that they can take on in how to handle uh, conflict uh, management. All right? So, uh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. So I have a, a Facebook page, right? It's called Gary Child Training, right? Uh, if you log into that, uh, I'll share pictures and uh, I also share tips on uh, that page. If you have any questions, right, you can either email me here, right, uh, support at uh, garychild.com, right, or you can uh, leave a questions uh, on my uh, Facebook page. 
Uh, so if I uh, if not uh, in training, so I, I will uh, answer some of your questions. Right. How to stop this? Just one change. To you. If you have any question now, right? No, please ask so that I can answer uh, before uh, you finish writing uh, that uh, uh, question uh, or things that you like about uh, yeah, this talk. But right. anyone have a question? Yes, still processing. All right, very good. Yeah. So if if we if we are feel a bit and shy to, to to ask now, then you can write the question now. <laughs> okay. So I can answer you. So yes. All right. Okay. Whereby they are not uh, upset, they are calm, right? You know, go to a neutral place, right? Neutral place, not your boss room, uh, or not your father's uh, room, yeah. So a neutral place can be a meeting room, or it can be a cafe, right? Where it's not too noisy, a yeah, coffee house, right? So let's have a you know one-to-one -one conversation, you know, sharing of opinions and uh, thoughts, yeah. So share with them that you know you are uh, concerned, right, about uh, you know the. Uh, Communications between both of you, right? If it's concern about work or concern about relationship with the family members, uh, raise that concern without making the person wrong. Why do I say that, right? Most people, right, sometimes uh, they they are living their life right, without a realization or awareness about uh, the impact of their action. Yeah, not everybody are aware of that, right? Because every time we look, right, we look at other people. We never or uh, seldom look back in ourselves, right? So uh, you should share with them the concern, right? And if you want to say it in a way whereby it's for a win-win situation. So it's not to put the person down, but you want to have a better rapport, a relationship with that person. That's why you raise this matter. So talk to that person about your concern. Yeah. So when the person listens to it, uh, the person may respond you know, either positively or negatively, but you know, it doesn't matter. Important thing is it's get communicated. You know, a, a positive aspect of it uh, is you get communicated about like or dislike. Right? So important that person also get awareness that oh this is happening. Let's say if the person is a boss, right? The boss may not realize that he has been like pushing everybody to the wall, and that's why you know the retention rate is so uh, low. Everybody is leaving the company. Uh, the boss always go around us. How come uh, people cannot stay here long? Because they are not having that awareness. So when you have a conversation like that with the boss, then the person ah have that aha moment. You know what I mean? Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't realize. So you know they are more willing to open to suggestion. Yeah. So this is uh, what I would uh, propose that uh, you no know, one person can do when they are dealing with a domineering person, right? But if you happen to be in a very serious issue, right? So the person not likely want to listen to you. Uh, as, uh, option two is to um, seek a consultation or uh, get a uh, someone who is respectful, the party, right, to mediate uh, the situation, right? Let's say you know uh, if the person happens to be your boss, right? You can ask a uh, someone this person respect. Right, to help to sit down and mediate about the, what can be done about the situation for the betterment of everybody. Uh, so because right, if the person respects someone, the person is more willing to listen you know, to uh, your message, right, which this person you know, understands need to be resolved. Yeah. So that, uh, does that answer your question? Yes. All right. Thank you. yeah. You're most welcome. Anybody else? Yes. Okay. Let's say we're dealing with someone who prefers not to go head on uh, to 
the content they prefer to either they keep quiet or they go beat around the bush and don't say things around. Mm -hmm. What do you think is best to overcome that? This kind of situation. Okay. Right. Thank you very much for your questions. Right. Usually, people who are avoiding uh, to to resolve, right? They have uh, two possible reasons. One, uh, they don't have trust and belief in you. So they said, whatever I say, no use, man. Especially, you know, uh, in the past experience, uh, every time I say something to you, you tend to brush it off. So to me, it's like I've given up. So I say, no point. Every time I say something, you brush me off, right? So now you ask me uh, how uh, I can help you. I say, you know, in my mind, I say, no way. So you know, I will avoid, you know, at, uh, at all opportunity. Uh, second possible reason is, right, I have a hidden agenda, right? I'm here to make life difficult for you. So I pretend uh, you know, to do something, but then you know, I do the opposite. Right? Every time you want to talk to me, I award you because I have a hidden agenda. So you know, in reality, right, in life, right, you know, sometimes people are like that. So they have a hidden agenda. They want to uh, sabotage you. Right? So they will pretend that they are working with you, but then they are not. Right? So you have to deal with that as well. Yeah? So does, does that answer your question? I mean, it doesn't un uh, answer the conflict that you're having, but it answer your uh, your uh, your curiosity as to you know why people does not uh, want to deal with it directly, right? Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that would take more time, right? No. Uh, ah. So that leads to this very good question and uh, point, right? Yeah. We're having a uh, conflict management program right, in Utah. It's a two days program, right? The price here is so reasonable because uh, in the corporate, right, the fees is uh, two times or three times more than this fees. But you know, thanks to Utah and uh, 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 the generosity, right? No one to contribute more to community. Right, so that's why I'm willing also to you know uh, reduce my fees so that everybody can benefit. So if you attend this program, you can learn more tools and skills. Right, and also can see uh, specific uh, issues that how you can learn how to handle it. Okay, right. So you have uh, one of these. Yeah, you can pick it on the way up. All right. So the dates are all uh, indicated. The price are indicated. Seriously, if you go and check outside the uh, corporate training, right, easily a uh, thousand. Uh, Five and above, right? I have personally attended a training program for even ten thousand ringgit, right? So I, I believe in learning, right? Lifelong learning, right? Uh, not just learning from one guru, you learn from different gurus, right? My learning took me to Australia, to Japan, to the US, to UK, all over the world. So I learned from the best. So that's how you know I appreciate you know what I learned. I can share with all of you. All right? Okay. Anybody else? Or we need to call it. Uh, the end of the session because of uh, the time. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. Oh, you, you, is it okay to answer more questions? Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. So if you have boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, questions that you're too shy to ask, then you can ask at the end of the session. Uh. All right. Okay. All right. So with that, all right. I thank you so much. All right. So what I want to say is I appreciate uh, your attendance here and your your uh, questions. I right, uh, appreciate you know your 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 questions because uh, it helped me to understand because I also learn uh, new things every day, right? So I also get to understand uh, what are your concerns uh, uh, from day to day, right? So with uh, with that, well, thank you so much. Uh, in Japanese, they say "domo arigato gozaimasu." Thank you very much. Right? Thank you. Thank you.